Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna continue our portfolio review session and we're gonna look at a portfolio from Kathy. Um, Kathy is currently an undergraduate student uh, studying HCI and architecture at uh, Carnegie Mellon University. She is currently seeking full-time position, so I uh, would love to get some feedback on her portfolio. So before I start, just a quick reminder, I share everything about UX from interviewing tips to design critics, portfolio reviews uh, on my YouTube channel. So if you are interested on this type of content, please feel free to subscribe uh, so you won't miss any of my future content. Let's do it. So uh, we are um, on the landing page of uh, Kathy's um, portfolio website. So first of all, let's take a look. Hello, I am Kathy Song, studying uh, human computer interaction and architecture at CMU. I believe good design can enhance user performance and I strive to improve user experience through a rigorous process of research and design. Cool, the headline is clear and there are three tabs on the header from work, about me, and resume, uh, which I think is great. This is basically the typical, the basics, um, the most basically the most important information you would need on a design portfolio. Then as I scroll, there are project cards, a couple of different projects showing up. Um, looks like there are like starting with uh, some mobile project, Polywork, CG stories, and they are getting more into data-driven display, uh, display. This might be a web product and uh, another one. So it looks like, um, so it looks like I think Kathy has a good amount of projects here. We looked at there are roughly like five projects, case studies on the portfolio. So that is a good um, amount of projects, uh, I think, for anyone who's looking for your first uh, UX design jobs. So um, one critique on the, uh, this quick storyline, the description here, um, I think, you know, uh, it's not a problem to calling out the fact that what are you studying at the moment? Uh, but this can like both HCI and architecture, which are two very distinct profession when it comes to um, job or career, this can lead to some potential confusions. Um, so I will leave this up to you. I think um, depends on the goal and how you position yourself. If the purpose of this portfolio is to say, uh, look for a full-time job as UX designer, I would try to deprioritize uh, architecture here. Uh, you can show it in About Me, in your resume, or maybe even have a separate tab to show your work um, in architecture. But I would uh, just think more about it, whether you want to put it in this first, the most prominent place, like first thing people will see on your landing page. Um, so, and I think if you are seeking for a full-time job as UX designer, I would focus more on HCI and probably call yourself like, hey, I am a UX designer and this is what I, I, I do and what I'm, uh, what kind of opportunities you are looking for. Otherwise, this can potentially cause, I think, some uh, confusions about um, what kind of job you're looking for. Um, then let's take a look at one of the project. Um, I'm just going to go pick up the first one. Um, it says Polywalk. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this correct, um, but it says it's helping parents to find activities for their children. It has a very fun uh, visual uh, from this mock. So let's take a look. Um, before I click into it, one more quick comment on the uh, project cards. I think the way how you show it here is fine, perfectly fine, a great style, like two projects in a row. Um, but I think you might want to give it a little bit more uh, one is visual like treatment i think because of maybe because of the first two projects it's mobile and there's no background color it feels a little bit out of space uh, when there are other projects coming up which takes more space of the card so you can think of different ways maybe introducing background color uh, to make this feels cleaner overall the layout uh, that it's actually taking the same amount of the space so it's more feeling of like a card view uh, rather than right now like the visual uh, Q is kind of jumpy just because the background is white and this is only a mobile mock, uh, which doesn't take as much space. The other quick comment is on the information here. I think, yes, having the name of the product is of course necessary, but often it doesn't mean much to the viewer or the hiring manager. So uh, it might be helpful to call out some keywords. For example, you're doing UX, UI, or research. Like um, it doesn't have to be the uh, the primary text. It might be like a secondary or hashtag just to give some highlight. Okay, 
if I'm hoping to see like your UX works, is this the project I should go into, click into, or maybe there are other projects that make more sense for me to take a deeper dive in. So just the foot for thought, like I think having a product name and a high level summary, which you have here is awesome, but maybe there is another layer of like helpful guidance you can give the audience, like a little bit touch on what's the scope, what's your role on the project. Okay, cool. Let's take a look at Polywalk. Okay, so now I'm on the project case, uh, the, the case study page, Polywalk, an activity making app that helps parents easily find activities for their children to do. Cool. I think, first of all, this structure looks very clean. Um, the designer has the mock on the right side of this page, and on the left hand, it starts with the name and a brief intro, which is very well written um, and very clear and explaining what does this app do. Now it has like a bit more uh, high level information. What's the team question mark, whether it is necessary. Uh, duration, helpful. My role, definitely helpful from research concept development to UX UI. Um, so I think this high level, this structure is definitely uh, always helpful to have this like overview um, of some key information involved on the project. And then it has going into overview our team design, okay, factor-based activity making app that helps parents easily find activities for their children to do. And there's some get into the problem space. Okay, explain, talk a little bit about a COVID situation that parents report their own worsening mental health. Okay, how has this connected to the problem you're trying to solve here? Then it comes into design solution. Okay, we came up with Polywork and activity making app. That helps parents easily find activities to do with their children. We hope to reduce children's screen time with meaningful and engaging activities when ch uh, parents are working. Awesome. And we want to create quality family time. I see. Okay. I like that how concise and uh, clear the language this designer is using here. It um, re definitely com helps communicate the intention and the motivation behind. Um, but what I'm trying to find is what is the problem you're trying to solve here? I think you had a problem statement first here. This is actually, you know, one in four of the parents report their own worsening mental health. But this is like the problem parents are having. What I'm looking for is what is the problem you're solving here? I guess it's somewhat explained here. Uh, maybe it's to design an activity making app, but I'm still like not 100% sure. Like, is this a redesign or you're trying to design a new, a, basically a new app from zero to one? Uh, let's continue. So it looks like there's a video. Okay, onboarding. Within the onboarding process, Polywalk asks questions about user preference, such as children's age and interest. Okay, so I'm just gonna scroll really quick. Looks like there are a couple videos here. And it's probably covering different like journey from onboarding to explore, to share, how to share ideas. I like that um, this designer has like a quick explanation, a summary of which journey, each journey, what it is about. For example, share ideas, allow users to share unique activities they have created for their children with other parents, which forms a community. I think this is incredibly helpful, like to have this high level explanation and walk through help your viewers understand which journey is talking about with what so um this is uh, uh definitely like uh, always very helpful to have this context even though you might imagine assume like search might be really uh, straightforward but search what so i think it's really very often very helpful to have this kind of um quick context of what is the journey we're looking at a uh, little bit questioning on the video form just because uh, just because i think to ask anyone to watch a video on a portfolio, it is a pretty high ask because it's going to take time. And if you're showing prototypes, um, maybe you can consider do it in a GIF, like convert it in a GIF. So it's actually autoplay. You don't have to actually go into tab like play and pause. Um, but this is kind of controversial. I think, you know, it both format has its pros and cons, like in a video format, you do give the users more control to pause, to fast forward. Um, however, 
it also depends on the user whether they actually click on the play to start watching the video versus on another format as a GIF, it auto plays but with less controls. So um, I'm gonna tap this one watch quickly about the onboarding. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like this is the prototype, uh, step by step. How do you like from create an account to um, answer a couple of questions, like set a preference for like probably your children um, to get the product running. So I think, yeah, it looks like the UI and the journey is pretty well designed and there are some like, um, yeah, this like nice filter uh, idea to set up user preference. Um, it's a pretty quick video, like roughly 30 seconds, but I would encourage you to think more about how to best present this because um, I think showing multiple videos um, might end up, um, like people might end up missing uh, some really critical information you have here. Uh, so maybe autoplay, uh, GIF format might be another way to showcase. Okay, then we have user research. So first started by either interview, after interviewing five dads and nine moms, these are the some pain points I have discovered. This is great. And expert interview, we also see insights, okay, from experts and interviewed a teaching um, assistant. Okay, I see. This is great. There are some quotes here. Um, target user. Is there some findings I'm missing? You know, like I'm, the key information when I look at user research is really through the user interview, no matter it's interview or survey or however the method you have decided, um, what is the findings and how has that led to your next steps? And I'm not sure if it is here. Maybe it comes later. Um, so let's continue for now. Target user. Based on the insight, different children's age range has different needs. We're targeting work from home parents with young children aging between two to seven. Okay. Um, that's a good framing of who are actually your target users. Then there's initial goal. How might we help work from home parents achieve a balance between their parenting and working? I think this is kind of getting to the problem statement that I was hoping or, or I was looking for. You know, how might we help work from home parents achieve a balance between their parenting and working by designing an app? like that can allow them to better blah 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 you know i think this sentence is kind of getting there but it's still a little bit kind of open so i would try to get it a bit more specific uh to the actual problem you're trying to solve in this case study then there is ideation okay card sorting ideation schedule and reminder system okay it talks about challenge and what might be some potential solutions um then get revised ideas, some iterations. Okay, revised goal. How might we reduce the time children spend on screens and help uh, parents further bond with their children? I see. So you see this goal started evolving from the initial one. That sounds a little bit too broad, like help work from home parents achieve a balance between parenting and working, work-life balance. This is a very broad topic, but how can you solve a problem? like more specific granular level, like this case study is focusing on. So now this revised goal is talking about how might we reduce the time children spend on screens and help parents further bond with their children. I think this actually sounds to me is the problem statement for this project. And I think this is something, yes, it makes sense in a project like process perspective, you won't get to this until a certain point, like to discover and define the problem. But I think from the viewer's perspective, this is something I would try to like clarify at the very beginning. Uh, you can talk later on how you get here, but I think without understanding the actual goal or the problem you're trying to solve in this case study, it's very easy for viewers to get, or the audience to get confused, like what exactly I'm looking, looking at. So um, then it has some, I think this is some IA or flows. Okay, information architecture of the, uh, the app. Cool. And there are some, oh, fun sketches. I always enjoy like looking at hand sketches. This is awesome. Uh, I think they are super fast and actually really effective, especially like when you're trying to like go broad and dive deep and dive, like just go broad and explore ideas. I often find like hand sketch is actually the best way. Um, and then there are some user testings and share ideas. Okay, what is this? The biggest, of, uh, is this getting to the hi-fi? Okay, uh, I see, sorry, amazing here. So the designer actually conducted some user testing with the lo-fi, uh, what is the goal? We put user in a scenario and design 
uh, the series of tasks for the user to complete. While navigating through app, we ask the user to think aloud so that we can collect feedback. Okay, I'll try to be more clear about what is the goal of this tasking here. Um, share ideas. Okay, filter. Okay, so it looks like this is like first testing, second testing, and final. So these are probably the design iterations from very low fi to mid fi to high fi. Um, this is an interesting way to present it. Um, I think it's actually helpful because you're comparing like and showing how the design has evolved from the initial mocks to the hi-fi uh, and final design. And uh, But how has it evolved and why you have made certain change on certain screen? I wonder if there are some explanations. Uh, so here, for example, filter, we redesigned the filter UI so that it's easier to use. We also set users' preference for duration and how many children as default to save users' time. Okay. So yeah, the good side is I think this designer um, does have like some explanations and high level uh, overview of what kind of design change uh, Cassie has made during the iterations. And but I think I would love to know a bit about uh, more about why, like you did testings, what you have, uh, what's the finding, and what has led to some decisions to take a design from this the first testing to the final design you know it seems like it's, uh, it's it has changed quite some um maybe some of this key uh this, this design decisions were some like call out and uh to really elaborate the details because i think this is to me as a uh potential ux hire manager this is the part i care the most it's really like when your design started iterate meaning making design changes and iterations based on the findings. Um, what are some decisions you have made and why? So uh, I think the overall, the structure works well. It's kind of grouped by journey or keyframes, uh, but I would try to use, be creative, use whichever way you feel the best, but I would try to show a bit more about like the thinking behind like uh, i think this high, high level summary is good but i think uh to show a bit more details in how this design has evolved um and what are some uh rationales behind your design decisions would really help cool ui and branding nice this looks fun colorful looking at how if I, I had more time i will conduct user testing with children auto direct user of polywalk is parents i want to make sure okay i see yes testing with children are can be very tricky but uh i think this is good uh as part of the afterthoughts also i will okay iterate on shared idea this is great then there are some takeaways i learned assumptions versus reality remote collaborations which is always challenging and truth about parent parenting is just start okay love this um, overall, I think this is a pretty well done case study. Um, the lens is very good. It's not too long. And I think the designer did a really good job about, you know, like guiding the viewer and control the pace of like visual uh, versus the balance of text. So it overall feels like a very good lens of case study. Not too long, not too short. And it has covered really the key information without diving into too much detail, which is uh, really awesome. Um, I think uh, main thing I would suggest uh, is really one to put more, a bit more details here um, in like how has your design evolved from the first testing to the final design. And uh, then it's really like, I'm not sure if there's anything you can add to show about your, uh, how you measure the success of your design. Uh, like if there's any data you have acqu acquired from the testings, um, for example, onboarding, what is the measurement? Like how do you want to measure the success of your design when you're working on like onboarding experience? Is that how long perhaps like the user will take to like uh, be able to successfully get onboarded? Um, you know, if you like, maybe there are some metrics you have, like for example, uh, this design from the first testing, which takes users like 20 minutes uh, and to the final design that only takes five minutes for user to get onboarded. Um, this is just me making up numbers, but you know, the idea is I think if you can add anything towards the end or towards the beginning to show the impact, um, how has your design positively changed 
the outcome of this product, that would be really make this story more powerful. Um, totally understand if this is a case study or something that you haven't got chance to actually launch to the market, it might be challenging to get those data. But uh, since you have mentioned like user testing, I think multiple times throughout the story, I wonder if there are like some data you can actually uh, take from those testing results and kind of um, put their like uh, share this towards like uh, to share the result and share the impact of your design. Um, I think that will overall make this story even better. Uh, I like the idea of showing the final design prototypes uh, at the beginning, but the visual here, just because maybe it's presented in a video player way, it does not feel as like uh, expressive. So um, I will encourage you to think a bit more how you want to treat, like visually treat um, this prototype at the beginning uh, to make it, I think it can maybe take a bigger space or just show the film mock itself rather than in this black player background, which is just a lot more element involved. And you know, like anytime we, there's something show, maybe it's part of the Vimeo player, maybe it's part of your mock, but only show the stuff you think is really truly matter. Uh, that will help like avoid any distractions and also help people to focus on the most important stuff that you want to show. Uh, but overall, I think this is pretty well done. Cool. Last, let's take a look at About Me. Hello again, I'm Kathy. I'm a designer and researcher, double major in... Is this like a task like asking a viewer after seeing this like front page? Now I should be able to feel in... Oh, I see. When you actually hover over the mouse, it actually shows up those field words, uh, human computer interaction and architecture. I like it. This is fun. I thought it was the testing at first. Uh, then when I'm not working, I like to do outdoor activities and bake de that dessert. I'm also very passionate about perfumery. Oh, very cool. I like this. This is a uh, little detail, add a bit more fun factor uh, and fun interactions. Uh, I think overall this uh, has well covered from like who you are, what you do, uh, besides professional work, but also a little bit touch on your like uh, passion and personal interest. Um, there are some image about perf perfumery and outdoor activities. And oh my God, this looks so good. And some baking pictures. This is, this is amazing. I think this about me page is uh, honestly very well done. You have a very good balance of text and image which similar as what you have done in the project case study, which uh, I think it's uh, something that really precious. Like uh, it, it is such a good balance that people never feel like getting bored when reading something. But because you have a, such a good balance of text and image, it always feels fun and actually feels I, I want to feel, it makes your viewers feel like they want to know more about you and your work. And plus you, I noticed you have a link for your resume and towards the bottom, there are some links to your social media and how to get in touch with you. So I think this is pretty well done. Cool, so that's all we have for today. So at the end, um, just a quick summary. I think Cassie did a really good job overall for this uh, portfolio and the case study we have looked at. A couple of key highlights is really number one, how do you want to frame your, uh, and position yourself? Um, I think double major is really cool that you are studying both HCI and architecture. And actually me coming from the architecture background, uh, I feel really resonated with you. And uh, But just the coming to like perspective from hiring manager as a UX designer, uh, I would encourage you to think about it, how to uh, best communicate and serve the goal of uh, portfolio. So if the goal is to find a full-time UX design job, uh, probably it might help to uh, like de-emphasize, I don't know, de-emphasize, is that a word, actually a word? You know, you, you know what I mean. Um, you know, uh, when presenting like two things in parallel or at an equal weight, it can lead to some confusions, but um, Let's say, assuming your goal is to actually seeking for a full-time uh, job as UX, de uh, UX designer, I might try to uh, just leave HCI and UX be the key focus in the landing page and summary, uh, but like keep the ar architecture side in like at a secondary uh, or less prominent space. The other comment is um, that we talked about when reviewing the case study is I think um, we get to the hi-fi and talk about how the design has evolved from the first testing, second testing to the final. Uh, I would love to see a bit more details um, how has some of those design decisions been made and explaining some explaining of the design rationales behind. 
um, I think those are really the two uh, main comments I had. Uh, yeah, the, the video we talked about, like how to best visually pre represent your prototype. That's one thing I will leave you to make a decision for sure. But just a, uh, a suggestion, I think having too much things shown at the same time or multiple videos can be a pretty high ask in portfolio. So you might want to consider some other uh, some other ways uh, in terms of how you present prototype. So, uh, but overall, I think this is a pretty well done uh, portfolio. And although we only got to look at one project today, but I think it looks like Cassie has um, done a really good job and especially balancing visual and text and making a story uh, interesting and compelling to look at. So um, we'll stop it here and we'll have more fun stuff to come. So I will see you guys next time. Thanks guys, bye.